legal dictation. 5 seconds. Comments. It is with the said object in mind that a constructive and purposive interpretation should be adopted that advances the cause of justice and does not dilute the intention of the statute conferring powers on the court to carry out the above mentioned avowed object and purpose to try the person to the satisfaction of the court as an accomplice in the commission of the offence that is the subject matter of trial. What is the nature of the satisfaction required to invoke the power under section 319 CRPC to arraign an accused? Whether the power under section 319 class 1 CRPC can be exercised only if the court is satisfied that the accused summoned will in all likelihood be convicted. Section 319 CRPC springs out of the judge is condemned when guilty is acquitted and this doctrine must be used as a beacon light while explaining the ambit and the spirit underlying the enactment of section 313 CRPC. It is the duty of the court to do justice by punishing the real culprit. Where the investigating agency for any reason does not array one of the real culprits as an accused, the court is not powerless in calling the said accused to face trial. The question remains under what circumstances and at what stage should the court exercise its power as contemplated in section 319 CRPC. The legislature cannot be presumed to have imagined all the circumstances and therefore it is the duty of the court to give full effect to the words used by the legislature so as to encompass any situation which the court may have to tackle while proceeding to try an offence and not allow a person who deserves to be tried to go scot-free by being not arraigned in the trial in spite of the possibility of his complicity which can be gathered from the documents presented by the prosecution. The court is the sole repository of justice and a duty is cast upon it to uphold the rule of law and therefore it will be inappropriate to deny the existence of such powers with the courts in our criminal justice system where it is not uncommon that the real accused at times get away by manipulating the investigating and or or the prosecuting agency. The desire to avoid trial is so strong that an accused makes efforts at times to get himself absolved even at the stage of investigation or inquiry even though he may be connected with the commission of the offence. In our opinion, the stage of inquiry does not contemplate any evidence in its strict legal sense, nor could the legislature have contemplated this in as much as the stage for evidence has not yet arrived. The only material that the court has before it is the material collected by the prosecution and the court at this stage prima facie can apply its mind to find out as to whether a person who can be an accused has been erroneously omitted from being arraigned or has been deliberately excluded by the prosecuting agencies.